Hey guys, so I'm back at the R14 valve again because I want to spend a little bit of time talking about anti-compounding. So anti-compounding, so what is compounding? That is a great question. Compounding is exactly what it says. It's compounding. It's when you have a, a double or compounded uh, application of your brakes. And how can that happen? So think about uh, how we're gonna normally act when we get inside of a truck. So we get inside of a truck and the truck, the parking brake is already set and we start the truck up. What is one of the first things we do or just as a habit, we put our foot on the brake. Now, understanding that in a pneumatic brakes, we have a parking brake and a service brake. If we put our foot on the brake while the parking brake is set, now we have a service brake that can actuate at the exact same time, potentially, right? So if we had no anti-compounding feature, we could actuate this service brake at the same time. Although it wouldn't move the rod any further, what would happen is we would have a force, a double force application, which would cause our, which could cause things like the uh, S-cam to become damaged or brackets to become damaged. And so we understand that that's inherently undesirable. So what we do is we build a compounding or anti-compounding feature into our relay valves. Now on older or on, on older trucks, we do have just a straight out uh, anti-compounding valve, and I'll cover that in a different video, or I'll cover a valve that has a different valve that has that anti-compounding feature built into it. But uh, for more modern trucks, so trucks that we're likely to see on the road nowadays, what we will we'll be seeing is more than likely uh, some sort of relay valve with anti-compounding feature built into it. So let's look at what the anti-compounding feature actually does. So here we see uh, no air pressure on the service side and no air pressure on our hold off side or our parking brake side. And that's indicating to us what? That the parking brake is set and that the service brakes are not being utilized. So, oh, I'm here by myself, so I have to figure out a way to do this. Okay, so let me try and not fall while I'm doing this. I'm going to put my foot on the brake and I wanna keep, I want you to keep your eye on these gauges. So, so now I have my foot on the brake. And what do we see? We see 60 pounds of pressure on both the, uh oh, let me get this video over here. We see 60 pounds of pressure on both the service side and the hold off side of the parking brake hand. Look, look what I'm doing for y'all, look at my foot. And so what does that mean? We pneumatically cage the parking brake side while applying uh, 60 pounds of pressure to our service side. So basically we split the application so that we did not compound the app, so we did not compound the braking force that was present inside of the brake hand. And that's basically the role of the anti-compounding feature inside of this R14 valve. Now there are other valves that can be present on older trucks that have anti-compounding built into them and we'll talk about some of those valves later. But basically, no matter what uh, sort of valve is doing the anti-compounding, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna split the application. So we're gonna have application air to our service brake and we're going to have caging done inside of our parking brake side of our can. 
which is going to prevent double application or compounding. All right. That's all I have. So have a good day. You have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. And if you, and I'll leave a, another description of just the R12 and R14 valve in this video, just so you can have that information available to you in case you don't, uh, in case you didn't see just the video on the R14 valve alone. All right. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.